As we've seen in previous videos, the concept of bird migration is something we've only properly grasped relatively recently, and throughout the ages a variety of outlandish theories have been brought forward to explain the disappearing birds. But there was one person in the Middle Ages, Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, that actually figured out bird migration. However, the population at the time wasn't ready to accept that, instead believing that birds could transform into other creatures or hibernate through the winter. But Frederick, as well as being an emperor, had a scientific mind, and he figured out a lot about bird migration. So in this video, I wanted to showcase how accurate and revolutionary his observations and study of migratory birds were for his time. Frederick II was an avid falconer, and his interests extended to birds as a whole. He had studied them for most of his life, and he is sometimes regarded as the first ornithologist. In his later years, he wrote down all he had learned in his work on the art of hunting with birds. This consisted of six books, five of which were specific to falconry and the hunting of a variety of bird species. But his first book was on the general habits and structure of birds, in which, among other things, he extensively covers their migratory habits. Birds make, as a rule, two such excursions a year, that is, from a cold climate to a warm one and from a warm climate to a cold. The first journey to be considered, that from the cold to the warm, occurs after they are hatched and have gained their full strength and plumage. We call this their migration or passage, because they journey from cold regions, the land of their birth, to distant warm countries. The second change of residence is after the winter season and is made from warm to cold regions. Not all water, shore or land birds migrate. Those who are unable to take long flights, inclusive or weak or disabled individuals, cannot make this journey particular to distant lands. They make another change in place of it, moving to neighboring localities. In winter, perhaps, they fly from hills to valleys nearby and in summer come back again from the valleys to the mountains. He goes on to list several reasons why birds migrate. To escape the cold, to find more abundant food resources. For water birds, the frozen water makes their habitat useless, so they go to other regions where water does not freeze. And predatory birds migrate to follow their migrating prey. He wrote pages upon pages on this topic, with surprising accuracy for a time when most people did not believe birds to be capable of traveling such long distances. He even included illustrations depicting migrating birds, and it's astonishing that after him it would take over 400 years for scientists to look into the migration theory again. The fact that this knowledge was disregarded for so long might be shocking to us now, but it was actually not the first time that knowledge of bird migration was lost throughout time. Alongside his own observations, Frederick drew from Arabic sources, which he came across during his participation in the Crusades. The people in the Middle East had a better grasp on the topic than Europeans, but Frederick also used the works of Aristotle. This Greek philosopher from the 4th century BCE already had a decent understanding of bird migration, which Frederick built upon. While Frederick learned from and respected Aristotle, he would improve upon his work massively with his own studies and observations, even correcting the Greek philosopher in a few instances and disregarding some of his theories entirely, as he found him to rely too much on hearsay and tradition, insinuating that Aristotle had little practical experience with birds. He had actually made a lot of mistakes, especially with birds of prey, in which Frederick was specialized. For example, one of the points Frederick corrected was the following. Aristotle claimed that in a migration formation, there is a single bird that leads the flock to their destination. But Frederick observed that when the leader gets tired, they fall back and another bird takes its place. So actually, the leadership position cycles through a number of birds. 
Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about those other migration theories that I mentioned, the playlist will be on screen right now. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patron, G. David.